Everyone, this is Farm to the Table, episode six. My name is Daniel Holloway, and this episode is about rhubarb. The reason why I picked rhubarb is because it's one of the vegetables, one of the first vegetables to spread up during the year. Uh, it's April, it's pretty cold, and uh, I think it's fascinating how rhubarb is able to punch up uh, uh, the beginning of the year like this. Uh, so I want to show and uh, uh, showcase uh, rhubarb in a way that you may not know. Uh, it's usually in custards and pies. So I want to do something different as always and uh, serve it with uh, some duck maybe. Anyhow, uh, we're at Spring Ridge Farms in Milton and uh, away we go. Uh, what people don't realize about rhubarb is it's actually a vegetable. Uh, it's often used like a fruit, in, like I said, in pies and custards. Uh, and it, but it's derived from buckwheat. And you can, how to store uh, rhubarb, and most people don't know this. You can just put it into a plastic bag at room temperature out on your counter for three, three weeks and uh, it'll stay fresh. Um, and it's very versatile, you can chop it up, you can freeze it, uh, it keeps forever really. Uh, because it's almost like a celery leaf, or a celery stalk. Um, but uh, what people don't know is that the, the leaves, uh, of the, the yellowish leaves from rhubarb, uh, it's very, very toxic. Uh, you have to eat a lot of it uh, for it to be lethal, about three uh, kilograms. But uh, during the Second World War, a lot of Germans died uh, while invading Russia because they ate uh, this foreign stock and they also ate the leaves. So a lot of the, the platoons died because of that. Um, so that's kind of interesting, a little uh, side note. Um, but I'm excited about uh, doing this duck because duck is actually one of my favorite things to eat. Uh, and uh, we're going to head to that, back to the kitchen and I'm going to show you what it's all about. Uh, first, I'm going to do a celery root puree. So basically it's going to be kind of like a, uh, a mash, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to throw some, uh, I got some Parmesan here. Um, it's just a couple of shavings. I'm going to use half a celery root, one medium sized Yukon Gold potato, um, some fresh thyme, and half an onion. So to start this off, this is kind of big so we don't need all of it. Um, you can pretty much wrap the second piece off uh, up and then store it in your, your fridge. It has a nice mild flavor, mild uh, celery flavor. You don't have to be fancy because it's going to be pureed anyways. My Yukon Golds and uh, my onions. I'm just going to put that into the pot. It's filled with water. Rhubarb, onions in the pot. See how the onions and the rhubarb are kind of like, they've lost their color and they're looking kind of limp? That's the perfect time to add my liquid. Red wine vinegar, half cup. And red wine, half cup. The reason why I have red wine vinegar in there is because um, I'm adding a, a rhubarb a jam or a, a, a jelly over here. So this is a little sweet to add directly to a sauce and we're not making dessert. No, you don't want dessert. So we add the vinegar to counterbalance the sweetness of the, the jam. Two teaspoons, heaping teaspoons. And this is actually going to thicken the sauce as well, uh, which I want a nice thick sauce. I'm just going to stir that in a wee bit. Yeah, man. I just want to talk about uh, the oven for a little bit. Uh, it's on at 350 degrees. Uh, I can push it to 375 if you wish. Uh, this is for the duck. Um, let that uh, preheat um, because the duck's going to need uh, some high heat. The pearl ones you can get frozen, uh, pre-peeled. Uh, I got red ones uh, and that are unpeeled. You can buy them in any produce uh, section in your local grocery. And um, if the cameraman can kind of just zoom in here. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling off the ends of it, kind of just taking the knife, get your, make an incision like a slice and then kind of just get your fingers in there and peel. 
So you have a nice clean piece. It's that simple, it's a little meticulous, but you know, it's going to look pretty sexy. I'm going to get my butter over here. Onions, drop them in. And I'm going to get uh, half a lemon. Watch out for the seeds. Squeeze that in. And squeeze a little bit into my sauce. A lot of people are intimidated by duck because sometimes I've heard that uh, people say that. It's too greasy, or it's too fickle. Or, uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, to do. It's actually easier than chicken if you do it right. Um, so I'm just going to open her up. And you can get duck breasts. I've seen that uh, actually um, some grocery stores have uh, duck, a section with duck fat, uh, duck confit, duck legs, whole duck, hot duck breasts, even uh, foie gras, which is uh, the liver of the duck. So they have a whole section now. And which the reason why I'm taking off the silver skin is because when you cook it, it tends to shrink up and uh, actually your, your, your duck breast will shrink with the silver skin. So we want to prevent that. Make uh, some incisions here like this. Um, what this is going to do uh, is going to prevent the, the duck from tightening up again. Um, it's going to give some opening uh, for the fat to be rendered because um, there's fat all through down uh, the, the, the skin so what we want to do is create a crispy skin and have the fat kind of release from these incisions because duck is very tender um, so the fat will crisp up and add another I, I guess like a contrast to the texture of the duck um, so this is going to render down the fat will release and the, the skin will become crispy. It's much like uh, when you deep fry chicken and get that crispy skin. Well, this is what we're doing with the, the, the breast. Um, so to prepare it, you actually have to pat it dry because it's, it comes fairly, fairly moist. So you gotta just pat it dry and see it's sticking to the, the paper towel. And that's what we want. Also, another important fact about duck is that um, you can't get salmonella. A lot of people, you know, uh, they like to cook their poultry uh, right through, and that's fine. But this isn't actually poultry. Uh, it's it's considered like a, a wild bird, um, and the reason why there is salmonella is because of uh, uh, improper uh, commercial raising of the animal. Um, and so with duck, uh, you often will find it served rare. I like it rare. Uh, the rarer, the better. And um, so today, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I got my smoking pan. You don't need any oil, like I said, there's a lot of fat. I'm going to season just one side of the breast first. Turn on the fan. Pepper. Salt. So once your duck goes down and it's seared for uh, maybe like a minute, you're going to turn this down. It's at high heat now, so I'm going to turn it maybe to medium heat. I just want to show you what's going on. See that? That's what cooking is all about. That color right there. We're just going to let that render for maybe, uh, I don't know, four minutes or so. We're going to turn it over and then shove it right in the oven. And then uh, we're going to start plating. Okay, I'm pumped about this uh, duck. And if you're not, there's something wrong with you. Because look at this. Once. So I'm going to flip it over. This is nice and crispy. It's going to be nuts. I'm going to flip it over, put it in the oven, 350 degrees. Shut the door. That's five minutes in the oven. That's it. Alright, so my uh, celery root is almost uh, ready to go for a spin in the, the Cuisinart. You can use a blender, uh, a hand masher, um, a ricer. That's all the methods I can think of. Uh, but in this case, I have a, uh, a, a 
just a quiz hour over here, or a food pot processor, sorry. Um, I got some fresh thyme. I'm just going to give this uh, a chop. This is going to grate. You can um, grate as much as you want. I'm going to pretty much show you um, my preference. That's pretty much it. Um, it looks like two tablespoons. And I'm going to take my celery root that's been boiling for quite some time, strain it off. I want to show you how soft it gets. You take a knife, push it down, and it squishes. It's done. Okay, so I'm going to push my parm in for my thyme, pepper, two pinches, salt, three pinches. Add a little bit of cream. Probably about a tablespoon. Right now, I think it's perfect. Uh, the salt's there. Got the celery flavor going on. You can taste enough, enough herbs, so this is ready to go. While I got that going, I'm going to take out my duck. This has to rest. For a little bit, because it's just like beef in the fact that oh yeah. if you cut into it too quickly, all the juices are just going to spill out everywhere and you're going to end up with a dry duck. And actually, most people do that. That's why they complain that duck is so dry, because they cut in too quickly. Just let that chill off for a little bit. Right. Got my puree. Set that down. Kind of off-centered. Got my duck. I always, when I cut my duck, um, I do the fat part down because it's easier to cut that way. And I do it on, a, on an angle. All right. So seared duck, Bromley duck breast with the uh, uh, rhubarb compote sauce. Um, and then we got our celery puree with some pearl onions. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to dig in here. Mm. Mm. What I love about um, the spring harvest is it's kind of like a kiss between uh, winter and uh, summer. So you have a lot of wintery feels with it. Um, but yet there's some bright flavors, uh, uh, I guess, uh, to make way for the coming season, which is summer. Uh, to pair, you can, you can do a white wine, like a bold white, or you can do a, a, a Merlot or a Cabernet. So I hate to get rid of you guys, but uh, I'm just going to sit here and eat this. And uh, so I guess that's it. Um, thank you for stopping by, and this has been Farm to the Table, Episode 6. Take care.